Thank you for joining me today. My name is Jarrell. I'm a normal human being. Today I will be answering a question that you guys have asked. I've had this in the comments in a previous video, so I will be answering you. Somebody asked, why do characters' hair sometimes go through clothes? You can see in this image depicted here, this is from Xenoblade Chronicles X, Definitive Edition on the Nintendo Switch, you can see the character's hair is going through the collar there. It's what we refer to as clipping. It's clipping through. Now, there's a number of ways to address this as a game developer, but all of it requires manual work. It's it's a lot of um, just manual labor. You have to identify uh, all the aspects of the graphics that will come together. And I believe this is a character that is from a character creator system. You can customize the character, the clothes, and the hair, and that adds serious complications to the situation. So I will go ahead and get out of the way here, and we can take a look at the behind the scenes of how to set up a character so that there is what we refer to as physics simulation when it comes to hair. And it's not just physics simulation, but collision simulation as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the character we are looking at here is actually quite more complicated than it seems because the clothes need to be manually set up for physics simulation. But first, if you are wondering what these particle systems are, one is for simulating cold breath if the character is in cold environments, and the other is to simulate vomiting. Now, with that out of the way, the way that in-game graphics work is that they don't really do anything on their own developers have to program these things to actually do anything. So we take a look here at a component, and this is a third-party solution called Magica Cloth for Unity. And if you take a look here in our modeling program, you will see that the bones are parts of a character's model that allow the character to animate. We can use the bones to define the arms and legs, and we can move those with keyframe animation or with inverse kinematics, which allows us to interact with the game world. You can see me manually moving the bones here. Now, the way you can get hair to animate is if you put bones in the hair, but this character does not have bones in the hair, so we have to take another approach. We could add bones, but the other approach is to use particle simulation in order to create a sense of physics simulation with the hair. Now, without bones in the hair, we won't be able to do anything. So let's go ahead and take a look at our game object here, or the hair. You can see we have our Magicka cloth set up, and we can actually designate the particle points that we use to calculate movement and placement. We do this so that we don't have to calculate the actual vertices. Now, the vertices are the actual individual points that create up the geometry data of a model. A character is comprised of a high number of vertices, as we see here. Every single point at which a polygon meets is a vertice. get those bones out of the way so they don't be selected here. Now, all of these yellow points is one individual vertice or vertex. And the problem is that if we calculate all of those, it's going to be quite heavy on the processing. Every game engine has a rendering budget that's not in terms of money. It's things in the game engine cost. They take up space and memory. They take up processing. If we were to calculate each individual vertice, this would make the character very expensive to calculate in terms of physics simulation. So we use the particles, and we can use far less particles to modify the placement of the vertice. If you have a look here, we have a 
set of colliders. These colliders are defined so that the hair can interact with those. Now, we do not have the hair interact with every single thing in the game environment because that would affect the rendering budget. That would be very expensive to process the hair colliding with everything. And there is no need for the hair particles to collide with everything in the game world. So we designate our colliders. Here you see our inverse kinematics at work as the character lifts up their leg to stand up on the block here. You can see the hair is animated with physics simulation despite not having any bones. It's because we are calculating the placement of the particles instead of the vertices. And again, that is because we can use far less particles, which is much cheaper to calculate. It means that we can have a better frame rate. You can see as I move the collider, the collider does actually affect the hair. In this case, the hair will try to revert to its default position, the way that the hair is before physics simulation. You can see if I turn off the colliders, you can see that the hair no longer interacts with those colliders. And you can see the hair is now clipping into the body because we have not defined the colliders. So you can see in Xenoblade Chronicles X and many other games, this is why the hair clips through the clothes. It is because the colliders have not been manually defined. The developers must manually define the colliders. They must place them in the environment and they must tell the hair, look, you can't go through this collider. The problem is that if we have clothes that are added dynamically via a character creator, it's already too late to define the collider. And depending on the system, the game engine, they may not be able to add collider definitions afterward. It does take a significant amount of extra work to make that happen. Now, in general, it's, it's not that expensive to have a collider for the hair, but it does take significant manual work. And if there are other things in the game in, that just require a higher priority in terms of attention from the developers, then higher priority tasks, of course, need to be worked on first. So that is why we see hair clip through clothes is the colliders have not been manually designated. It could come down to performance. It could come down to development. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this sort of behind the scenes explanation of games. If there are any other topics that you would like me to cover, please do let me know. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Be well, and I hope you have a great Easter weekend.